Okay, welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube. If you're watching there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we have a donation deck to play today with Jeskai Tokens. So this one looks um, a little different. We're we're trying to play a Divine Visitation deck for the most part. Um, so we have we have a whole lot of things that make uh, little tokens uh, between Legion's Landing, Hazda if you're attacking with a lot of creatures, Instigator, War Boss and so on, reinforcements, and of course, Dovin. Um, and so we can make those things 4-4. Four, four. So we're an aggressively slanted deck here where we are attacking early um, with our 1 and 2 mana creatures and uh, backing that up with Unbreakable Formation if there's a Sweeper, which is kind of nice. And then uh, if, if our early pressure doesn't get through, then in the late game we can uh, drop a Divine Visitation and start making Angels and... Hope to finish the game off from there. So, um, so yeah, so that's the plan. Uh, so we'll see how it how it kind of works out for us. Uh, see what we like here, and uh, try to go from there. Sideboard, you know, we got like some counter magic. We got a little bit of removal with Justice Strike. Um, we have an extra threat with Tajik. We also have a bunch of Venerate Luxodons. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what we're doing with these Venerate Luxodons in the sideboard. I think our, our best guess is like Chain Whirler um, that tries to kill a bunch of 1-1s. One we can make them not 1-1s. One um, that's, that's a whole lot of sideboard slot equity. I've taken four slots there. We'll, we'll see what we want to do with those. And uh, yeah, we'll also kind of see what we want to do with this deploy. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's try it out. Just Guy Tokens. How would we beat a Wild Growth Walker? Um, we'd beat the Wild Growth Walker by making 4-4s. Four 4-4 four four Angels can certainly beat a Wild Growth Walker. Hey, track team. And Todd James, may the mana be with you. Thanks for the bits there. Happy Saturday. Yep, 12-hour stream, track team. And thanks for all the kind words. All right, we got a um, nice early start here. I think I want to just lead with... It's either Marshall or Landing, and I think I just lead with Landing. Have the lifelink creature in right away. That's a really good draw, getting the white mana. We can already go with Dovin next turn. Hopefully we get to flip this Legion's Landing. And we can have Heroic Reinforcements the following turn. Never mind, I'm going to go with War Boss. Man, if they have, like, Cry of the Carnarium, that'd be kind of rough. Uh, where do I get my shirts from? Um, God, most of my shirts... Most of my shirts from Kohl's, uh, Mark Anthony brand. Let's see... Let's certainly see Kaya's Wrath next turn. If I go Heroic Reinforcements... And they don't counter it. They're likely just going to counter it. I could just sit back with the Danto the first four. Like if they have Counterspell here and then Kaya's, Counterspell, Kaya's Wrath. What do I want to do?
Oh, right. I guess I didn't, I didn't even need to activate a Danto there because the Marshal making a 1-1 one, one was going to turn on Snubhorn Sentry. So I could have just waited and had a 1-1 one, one at the end step. Really, Unbreakable Formation? You're late. You are late. Should have had an extra 1-1 one, one here. That's my bad. I look I forward to seeing, seeing your mistakes. Suffer, but I'll make an exception for you. Our opponent's like, what's this unbreakable formation doing? I hope you don't mind if I enjoy this. I like where we're at though. Kaya. So they can gain two life. I like a good fight. Go to nine. Notice I didn't say fair. Gone. And we can attack for eight. My inventions bring joy to me and others. Keeping the unbreakable formation up. Was that dear to you? Now it's dearly departed. Look at the top ten cards of your library, put three of them into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Yeah, it didn't do too well with Rakdos, unfortunately. Oh, did I, I'm, yeah, I missed a token at end step there. I guess they're probably not going to have instant speed wrath. There's, there's no point to play a Divine Visitation. Because whether the token's like a 1-1 or a 4-4 doesn't really matter. Tapping out and letting my opponent wrath us is not going to help us. Alright, Disdainful Stroke Spell Pierce. And then... Uh, nice Hasty Tajik. This is not a Divine Visitation matchup. Unfortunately... Like me some divine visitation, but that's not this matchup. Um, that's sixty four. I guess we have a Danto because it's it's so good at attacking and it's a good aggressive card and that's what our, our deck is. It's an, an aggressive deck and it stays around and and uh, can win games kind of on its own. Yeah, I'm, that's what I was looking at too is the Goblin Instigator. Um, I think maybe I do have too many threes here. Maybe I don't want this Tajik. I don't know. I kind of like the, the hasty Tajik though. If I cut Instigators, is that too many three i guess really unbreakable formations like more than three you know so it's like nine three drops i don't think we really want to cut uh i mean three unbreakable formations a lot but this is the exact matchup for a breakable formation so i don't really want to get rid of one 
like if we're not playing unbreakable formation in this matchup, there's no reason to have the card in our deck, kind of thing. It's this is the best matchup it can it can be in. Uh, we have our hand of all three drops. I guess Instigator would would look a little better than that Tajik right about now. So if I would have kept in two Instigators and not the Tajiks, that would have been looking a little better for us, but. Maybe not. No, I'm doing the normal play till you win five or lose two leagues. You just said Snubhorn Sentry. We do need 10 permanents to make it do anything. I like the one drop. No, if you, when you sacrifice, um, when you sacrifice a uh, Danta Vanguard to like Prime Speaker Vanifar, you, Making it indestructible isn't going to do anything. It's still going to die. Um, I don't. I don't have any plans right now to play more of the uh, competitive metagame challenge events. The packs just aren't worth very much because I've opened enough packs now to have four of all the rares in the set. So it's just not. It's not very. It's not a, a great payoff then when you're not getting anything from the packs. So no Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, you were writing. Settle the wreckage. So they got two cards from us. What time in there? Anyone would be so foolish as to face me. That cell's not not that big a deal. Like they get a war boss and a Hazda, and we get a, we still have a token left over. I'll phase through anything that stands in my way. The smell, ew. All right, so we have three, six, nine. Perfect. I can play Tajik and war boss. And hold up unbreakable formation. Um. I don't enjoy seeing things suffer, but I'll make an exception for you. I'm just gonna get Kaya out of here. I'll be back. It's probably worth the two damage. Yes. They do not get plus one, plus one. Huh. I don't know why I thought that that card just gave the creatures plus one, plus one also. So I, I thought I was kind of safe from a cry of the Carnarium. I guess I didn't. Shows how little I played this card.
Oh, man. Good job, just aimful stroke. Way to come right on time. So I guess I need... Uh, Alright, Tajik, you're out. Guess I need a couple Justice Strikes for Lyra. I mean, I can have Venerate Luxodon to, to protect from Cry of the Carnarium. Gosh, this card's just not very good. Settle and Cry didn't, does nothing against. Yeah, I don't really hate Depose Deploy. Don't hate that one at all. Um, uh... Alright, taking out one formation. That formation card is just not, not too impressive. We'll take one of those out and uh, take out a Justice Strike because we can we can tap down a Lyra for a turn. All right, game three. Well, for I guess formations in the deck to protect against, like Kaya's Wrath. Of course, you know the first game we drew it the turn after Kaya's Wrath. I like how we drew the disdainful stroke the turn after Lyra. Vanguard is certainly good to see. Certainly glad we have a, a Vanguard here. They, of course, can have Cry of the Carnarium or Saddle, like their removal spells they had last time. Um, but we will have the Spell Pierce to help protect it when we untap. Uh, yeah, yeah, the White Mirror is where you just cast it on your main phase. Get the counter on it. Can certainly see that. I think our opponent has the gain three life draw card card. Revitalize. You know, maybe I should be waiting on heroic reinforcements, but I don't I don't think so. We know it resolves. You know, we can't We can't win a, a long game too well against like a Lyra anyway. We basically I played against an, an opponent that is very, game. very prepared for a bunch of one one creatures. With all these Kaya's Wraths and Cry of the Carnariums and Settles. <laughs> I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. Pack your bags and hit the road. Oh, that got my blood pumping. I mean, Kaya can gain life doesn't do very much I guess now for life you? Now it's 
dearly departed. It's the small things. That Just hope our opponent doesn't have Lyra. Also, to go with all these rats and everything. I hope you said Kai's ultimate deals play. damage to target player, so they cannot kill. My inventions bring joy to me and others. Uh, they can't kill like Dovin. It's not like player or planeswalker, so they can do six damage to us, which of course Pack doesn't doesn't matter too much. Oh, dang it. Well, I guess I'm making a token. You're doing me a favor. Next turn we take up to six. Don't you hate it? Yeah, I wanted because of that, I wanted to just to take up last turn. It's the small things. I could have had an ultimate next turn. Danto Vanguard's doing its job. Sometimes things come back to haunt you. Oh, I didn't even realize that Kaya also says, and you gain that much life. Constantly seek to innovate. So they gain a little life there. There's not any incentive to play best of three ranked. The amount of here packs and gold you end you win at the end of the season is just nominal. is complete and ready for inspection. Hmm. Are right, definitely taking a disdainful stroke to protect against Alira. We already have another Dovin. So uh, I think our next best cards are Legion's Landing and Depose Deploy. I'll just get Kaya out of here. I'm gonna make myself scarce. So Kaya can't kill like my legions landing or anything. Your loss will either be a tragedy or comedy of errors. All right, then we'll go ahead and deploy here. They hope they don't have Lyra for their last card. No Lyra, please. Hooray, no Lyra. Not just a gadget, but ingenuity. What if I should play around settle? I guess that kind of plays around settle. Ooh. That's a good one. Maybe just sit on lands to try to get them to use a duress early. Alright, well now I don't feel very bad about attacking into a settle with the with the Legion's landing flipped.
Alright, you got me, opponent. I feel like it was super likely they had one, because they hadn't been playing one the whole time, but they had one. They got me. But now we have a Danto flipped, we get an ultimate Dovin again next turn. Could tick up again. Nah. This is why I am generally banned from gambling. Formation, reinforcements. Got to Vanguard. Oh, dang. I was going to try to kill them this turn. <clears throat> Reinforcements. Giving my creatures haste. I was going to try to kill them. Alright, we are going to be 1-0. Yeah, Dovin was really nice for us, for sure. Dovin did a whole lot for us. Basically won that because of Dovin. Which, you know, saying that like we won because of a, a card from the newest set. Dovin doesn't seem like the one we'd be naming, but... Yeah, Delvin was looked a lot better than Kaya. Kaya didn't really do anything for our opponent. You know, if the if the Kayas were like, you know, like Karn, I think we lose really bad if our opponent just had Karn instead of Kaya. Hey, rated. Yeah, good game. Yeah, I was saying I was saying how surprised I was like the Delvin was so good for us, but unfortunately, your Kaya was not very good. Um, I don't think so, Streak Almighty. Yeah. But yeah, good game, Raided. All the war bosses. You can see Dovin and Curiosity working hand in hand. What's curiosity? Is that curious obsession? Or is there is there a card called curiosity? Curious obsession. Okay. Um yeah, I'd like to play more aristocrats in standard. Yeah, that's, that's a deck I'll get back to. I, d I don't know exactly when or anything, but yeah, that's a deck I'll get back to. Zombie Knight. Not sure we'll get through. Our opponent's playing three twos. It's kind of hard for us to break through the line of three twos. Three twos.
I want to put one more card in my Bant Vanifar deck. I either want Vivian or the Immortal Sun. What would you play? All right, so yeah, you have no other no other uh, Planeswalkers. I'd probably say one Immortal Sun over one Vivian. Um, in a Bant Vanifar deck. Yeah, with every other creature being every other card being a creature. Yeah, I think I'd go with the, I would say Immortal Sun. Vivian can, like, really help you dig and find, like, whatever creature you want to pot away, though. <clears throat> you want to use Vanifar for. Alright, next turn we're going to attack for a whole lot. Don't have an explore creature, please. D what if we draw Divine Visitation? Oh my gosh, if we draw Divine Visitation... Oh, baby. I forgot we had this card in our deck for a second. Oh, my gosh. That is awesome. Eat it, opponent. Four fours. Boom, boom. That's, that's the card right there. So even if they like finality, <clears throat> we still have heroic reinforcements, which is like double four four, coming on in. So yeah, somebody asked how do we beat Wild Growth Walker earlier. That's how. Visitation. Get some. Um, as far as sideboarding goes, what's this unbreakable formation doing? Yeah, you're welcome, track team. Justice Strike's pretty good. Is it? What are we trying to kill with that Justice Strike? Doesn't kill Wild Growth Walker. We can kill a 3 2. Is that really what we're trying to do? We can just kill like a Krasis. Hey, what's up, Randy? Um, I'm not sure if I really like this formation, though. Kind of want Disdainful Stroke and Deploy. Because, like, their main sweeper is finality um, that we don't really get to stop. Um, what else do we cut? These instigators are just not very good. But, oh well. Now, Snowporn, Snowporn's at least a 3-3. Three, three. Like 3-3s. Three, We got one game. I think getting another game is going to be kind of tough. But let's go for it. Yeah, that's that's basically the only time we want Goblin Instigator is when we have a Divine Visitation in play. Uh, it can help us turn on like a Hazda Marshal, I suppose. Well, we can't attack anymore. 
We had a good run. We tried hard. <clears throat> next turn, we, we could attack with the two snub horns next turn. Uh, and the token from War Boss, and make another, make an extra token with Hazda. Oh, man. Please don't have finality. Oh, it's whenever it and two other creatures attack? It's not just when three creatures attack? That's a tilt. As long as our opponent does not have finality, we're okay. I mean, we're, we're better than okay, as long as they don't have finality. I guess, I mean, they could also just have a, a disenchant. I'm not going to be very good against a disenchant either. Okay, that's good. We only have one card we don't know about. We can win if these two cards are blanks. How okay, are they blanks? Yeah, I don't know either. Hopefully they are. Concession. Ooh. Concession. Do we get? Are we two and zero? Oh? All right, Choop doesn't save them. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. One. Man, Divine Visitation is great. With War Boss. Two and oh. All right. Hey, what's up, Cryo? We are 2-0. and oh. We got started with Jeskai tokens a little early because, unfortunately, Rakdos midrange uh, did not do very well. Anyway, it was my fault. Some. And we flooded out a bunch also. Yeah, yesterday, that's that's what we did all yesterday was the metagame challenge event thing. Got a lot of packs, but every pack was just 20 gems because I already have four rares. Four of every rare in the set, so it's... It's, uh... It's not as, um... Um, as beneficial. Yeah, I think I'm going to try the, the Revel and Riches deck again later. <laughs> yeah, we probably will have time for another donation deck. So yeah, good call, Matthew. Yeah. So yeah, if you'd like a donation deck on stream, probably could fit one in today. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely, definitely like tomorrow or any of the other days. Hmm. Enigma Drake, that one's kind of tough. I'm 
be a genius by a surrounded by lesser minds. <laughs> Let's block this Terramander. <laughs> no, it, it didn't have a bunch of aggro cards. The No, we didn't have a bunch of aggro cards in. Um in my lap. Here we go. Good boy. Hawkeye stream. Um. So I don't, I don't really love anything I can do too much here. I'm going to flip this landing. Hazda dies. And they take two. And then I play Snub. Snub. Instigator. And another token. This is just a small example of my genius. I think that's our, our best plan right now. Heroic reinforcements would be like our, our best card to draw, but this one shouldn't be so bad either. Oh, I should just play the Legion's Landing and... Spell Pierce? Come on. Rude. Yeah, I should have played Legion's Landing first, though, just to, you know, get a counter on that creature also. Alright, if I attack out... Um... They block two things. That spell pierce is rude. Dovin doesn't. Do, Dovin would have only gained two loyalty. If we would have ticked up Dovin, it would have gained two loyalty. <clears throat> um, plus the, the tick up, so three total loyalty, but they would be able to kill the Dovin pretty easily with the Drakes. As in Iowa Hawkeyes, yeah. Drakes, though. All right, can we get heroic reinforcements, please? Nope. So they can kill three tokens. Guess they have to kind of block these snubhorn sentries a little bit. Um, no, Cry is a better card than Golden Demise. The only reason to play Golden Demise would be if you are a small creature heavy deck. Uh, where you like you're like kind of like a token de deck like this where you can ascend and not give your own creatures minus two minus two That's the only reason to play golden demise uh, He's about 12 around there No, I was just born in Iowa. I didn't go to the University of Iowa, but I, I was born there um, and it, so I used to go to the Hawkeyes games like a lot whenever I was a kid and everything.
So in one more turn, we can have lethal if our opponent has nothing. All right, opponent didn't have anything. All right, certainly a disdainful stroke matchup. Justice Strike uh, also going to be really good here. Um, just kind of worry about Fiery Cannonade a little bit. Um, but, you know, we have, like, this Unbreakable Formation also. Delvin doesn't seem too good for us. Very easy for our opponent to pressure Delvin and kill Delvin. The Goblin Instigator also is not spectacular. Tajika is good against Cannonade, that's true. So if we bring in Tajik and cut Delvin and Instigator. That gets us to 60. So that just kind of works out. Yeah, we want to cut Instigator because it's just not a good card. So it has like a little bit of synergy with, with the deck, but it's just not an individually strong card. And it also it gets a lot worse after sideboarding whenever the opponent is going to be more um, ready to deal with... Uh, the going wide strategy, it it really hurts the it hurts uh, Goblin and Skater a lot. So it's it's not only like the weakest card in the deck, but it also is um, its value is e is diminished further after sideboarding. So yeah, it's easy the easy to be the card to cut. Uh, Hawkeye's probably kind of hungry. Yeah, it's, it's around his lunchtime. Right about now. So playing the Legion's Landing first to play around um, Spell Pierce. You know, now I guess they can cannonade in response here. to have it. Alright, really want to just resolve this Divine Visitation. Because making 4-4s four is really, really good against uh, Drake. So, really hope this Divine Visitation resolves. Yeah, I mean, they could have Spell Pierce, but... Hopefully not. It's not like they're ever not going to have the spell pierce. Dang. And it's, it's not too likely that we draw two more lands. I guess maybe they would not have spell pierce if I would have waited for Crackling Drake.
No, Tajik stops fiery, fiery Cannonade from doing anything, so the opponent can't let Tajik resolve. Dang, they've had just like the... Basically every turn they've been like, I hope they don't have X card, and they've had it. The Cannonade, the Spell Pierce. And they even had the Shock there for that war boss. Yeah, this one's over. I should not have ran out the div divination, I guess. The visitation, with them only having the one mana available. Honestly, could see Venerate Luxodon here. If we're gonna, like, Venerate Luxodon seems like it could could do stuff here. Yeah, I'm going to play it. I'm back to not being sold on this Tajik. The upside of Visitation is just so incredibly high. It, you know, it is, it is incredibly fragile with how weak it is to Spell Pierce and everything, but the upside is just so high with um <clears throat> with divine visitation that I'm keeping it in Again, Visitation can just win us games that we're not going to win otherwise. I like having the Luxodons in right now with these Vanguard's hands. Um... Get a couple 1-1s one in, in play. Because turning a Danto Vanguards into four twos instead of three ones when they're attacking is really important against these four toughness drakes. So I uh, certainly like. I'm glad that we have the Luxons in our in our deck, even though we don't we don't have them in our hand right now. Yeah, I lost with Rakdos mid-range. Um, I could have... I mean, I had lethal on the battle. I won game one against Sultai, and I had lethal on game two. And when I was early, I just didn't didn't realize it until right after. And then we ended up losing the match. And then uh, we played against a blue-green deck and didn't draw very well, and the opponent did, and, you know, we lost. Alright, Luxodon doing its thing. Growing up these Adanto vanguards. Yeah, this could certainly be a Boros deck. Um, someone in chat put.
put in the uh, Boros deck that that they like with it. That's like similar. Um, so there's a, a Boros Visitation deck. Uh, no, I don't think there's any chance Krasis gets banned. I think the chances like one percent or less. The Dovin the Dovin did a whole lot for us the first match. We we really won that game three because of Dovin. But we're looking really good here. That deck list worked for me just fine, Matthew. Stream Decker is a weird site, but no, it worked, worked just fine for me. Nine in. Welcome. Good morning. All right, we are 3 and 0 oh with our Jeskai tokens. We've been getting pretty fortunate here. Yeah, our deck's working. Our deck is working. Hmm. That's going to be a mulligan. Ugh. I don't think a five card hand will be better. We have... That card's just not going to be impactful enough. We need to find our, our more impactful three and four mana stuff. Uh, you know, we need to find, like... We need to find a Danto Vanguard, a Legion War Boss. All that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're playing against Fanatical Firebrand. I'm not going to shock. I think next turn I can just play Clifftop Retreat and, and go double spell, and we're kind of good there. A one drop you don't keep on turn one is a bad one drop. Well, what if he, your hand is only just two other one drops? So you already have things to do on turn one. Like why do why would we need to keep a why would we need to keep a third one drop when we have no nothing to do on like no good twos threes or fours in our hand? I think we need to dig to more powerful cards when you're on the mulligan there. It doesn't mean that our our one drop's bad because we didn't keep it there. Like I wouldn't keep any one drop there. So if I block, they lightning strike me. We got it out of their hands.
They could have they could have certainly just Wizards Lightning the O3 and attack for three anyway. Um, but if we if we would draw like a Legion War Boss here, uh, you know the the Wizards Lightning's out of their hand. Okay. Mono red, huh? So just a strike, Luxodon. Get this unbreakable formation card out of here. Um Hmm. What other card am I cutting for this Luxodon? I think I, I think we need the divine visitations and and we need to be able to get four fours because we have just so many weak cards like Vanguard, War Boss, Instigator. Basically, like eighty percent of our deck is really bad in this matchup. So is Tajik even better than War Boss? Probably not. War boss, you know, with divine visitation, can really get us there. I think. I think we have to get lucky to survive till divine visitation, and then be able to get some tokens somehow and make some four fours. Yeah, it deploys an option. Um, what's it better than? At four mana, four mana for two one ones. It's a lot of mana in this matchup. I want to play cheaper stuff with the Venerate Luxodon. I mean, Tajik is just the the lightning rod for, like, there's there's not really better creatures too much to protect. You know, like Tajik, yeah, stops them from shocking other creatures, but they get to just shock Tajik, and that's like the only card that's maybe more valuable that would die to a shock than Tajik is a war boss. Yeah, it's having creatures kind of like gaining life. Yeah, if we tap like a, a Chain Whirler or a Steamkin for a turn, draw a card, that could certainly not be bad. We've only had one game with Man in Trouble so far. Uh, I don't I don't know why we were not playing History Banalia. That seems like a, a card that is really, really just a really strong card and a card that would be really good. I don't know.
I you have been from a nice and sound success. wanting. For me to slip up is rare. That's bad for me. Hmm. So we're at six permanents right now. I can't turn on Snubhorn. have their uses so we can have our, our goblin jump block the chain whirler if they attack dove in which presumably they will hey Asher 12 hour stream uh, Tig, try try that link right there. These results are an anomaly, not to be repeated. That may may help out. I don't know what that attack's about. I don't, I don't know why our opponent attacked with the chain whirler, but I like it. No, zero counter, zero damage would not add counter to Dovin. I don't know, the snub horns have been good for us. <clears throat> Just a, it's a good card. Um, certainly really helped us beat the Drake stack earlier, uh, being like the 3-3. Three, three. They could certainly have another Chain Whirler, but I'm I'm attacking with that 3-3 three, three also, because I'm just trying to kill them before they draw another Chain Whirler. That's like our our plan. <clears throat> hmm. The red enchantment that deals one damage for each one power creature attacking seems like it could be sick in this deck. Honestly, it could be. That could honestly work. Tajik is good against Chain Whirler. That's a that's a very fair point. Ah. Why are we splashing Dovin? I don't know. Dovin's cool. We get counter magic also. Really, the formation card's been excellent for you in creature matchups for Bamp Bugler. Interesting. Ah, uh, so Todd, I've played some of your Angels decks the last few days. Till now, Esper is my favorite one. Seems to be competitive and fun to play. Awesome. 
Cool. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited to, to replay the the Esper one, also here in a little bit. Um, I guess that's our, our next stack up. Yeah, I, I don't think the I don't think it's fully tuned out or anything, but nice. Glad you're enjoying it. I'm not sure if we're going <clears throat> going to uh, tweak anything to Esper. I'm not sure. Feels like there's some different things I could be doing with that. Like maybe I should be playing Takali Honor Guard in there instead of um, <clears throat> Tithe Taker. But I kind of need Tithe Taker against like the control decks. Maybe it should just be Treasure Map. But then is it certainly too slow against control for just playing Treasure Maps? I don't know. Maybe we just don't play any two drop because we because we go with um And then go with like more Kaya's Wrath. Cool, yeah, you like the Esper Angels more than the Esper Midrange. Yeah, I could, I could certainly see it being a little stronger than that deck. See if this pays off. I don't think it will. I don't really have a way to deal with that Phoenix though. I don't. I don't want to take the four. And so, doing this on their turn where I can untap and reinforcements. Very nice. I think I leave one token back to block Pyromancer. Maybe I just don't. No, I, th I think I have to. Nice, Zeus. You've been playing it for ladder? Awesome. So if we go to four, yeah, I'm certainly just going to go to four. Well, I'm taking it, taking four, but down to eight, but like the Phoenix can attack for four to put us down to four next turn. Yeah, another reinforcements or even just a blue source. Like Glacial Fortress. I'd really like to draw Glacial Fortress here. Or I can Dovin plus Justice Strike. You know, Dovin can gain a life, make a 1-1. One, one. Well, I have to decline. Double risk factor. 
That's really rough. Unfortunately, these Justice Drags just can't beat Rekindling Phoenix. We put up a good fight there, though. Three and one. Alright, put up a good fight. Yeah, that's got to be a, a pretty bad matchup for us. Chain Whirler just wrecks our deck. Well, Lava Coil does not kill Lyra Dawnbringer. That's the problem with Lava Coil. I can certainly see that spot being Conclave Tribunal, though. Conclave Tribunal would make a lot of sense. As I can answer to anything. What deck do you recommend to grind the best of one cues? Honestly, I don't. I don't play the best of one cues kind of at all, so I don't really have a, a recommendation for that, honestly. Sorry about that. No gates ablaze, please. Well then. They're still at 19. Game's not over. We need to draw Divine Visitation. That's the card we need is Divine Visitation. A little late there, Unbreakable Formation. That is the second time that our opponent has cast a Wrath, and then our very next draw step is Unbreakable Formation. We also had our opponent cast a Lyra, and then our very next draw step was a Disdainful Stroke. Um, Rakdos wasn't as bad as, like, the O2 looks. I had, uh, I was up a game in one match, and I had lethal on the battlefield. Um, if I got, if I used Eldritch Reborn, like, Eldritch Reborn third chapter is going off, and I grabbed a Rekindling Phoenix, but if I would have got uh, Siege Gang Commander, I could have killed my opponent. So, it was kind of my fault. Uh, and then the next game, um, we just got outvalued by Blue Green and a bunch of Growth Chamber Guardians and couldn't keep up.
I don't have the mana to use Adanto and cast reinforcements. So I'm just casting the reinforcements. I'm going to have the unbreakable formation up for another sweeper. Honestly, I could be more patient. Can't beat that card. That's only six life. Okay. Not the worst. What our hero heroic reinforcements might have done there is kind of make our opponent play that Archway Angel. Maybe they didn't want to yet. So they're down to four. Hope not they don't have a third gates ablaze. Time to start going wide again. I look forward to seeing your my genius. If they don't have anything, we can have lethal next turn, right? No, not not, not next turn. No, there's not next turn at all. Yeah, we're playing for reinforcements. The deck doesn't have that many 1-2s and 3-drops, but Ritual of Soot was like the card we could never draw. We needed it so bad against the, the blue-green deck. Ugh, what are all these mass manipulations doing? Hmm. So now they get to gain a life. Oh, that got my blood pumping. Reinforcements, please. Uh, reinforcements would have been lethal. We need to draw one more of those. Hey, CD, doing good. No, I, I like Mass Manipulation main deck, honestly. I mean, I think that card's probably better than Hydroid Crisis in this deck. Like, they get to just ramp so much. I like, I like those Mass Manipulations. They should minus with this Dovin, but I think they're gonna plus. I constantly seek to innovate. But I can't you know, minusing kinda of keeps them alive. But Yeah, there's two X's on mass manipulation, so you have to pay X twice. So if if you want to gain control of one creature, you have to play one and then one and then four. So you have to pay six mana. You want to gain control of two things, you have to do two, and then two, and then four. So that's how that works. 
<clears throat> Alright, heroic reinforcements. Dang it. Yeah, KY or KW. Yep, I. Uh, I'm staying home now. Don't I don't travel to events. So I'm streaming each and every day. I hope you don't mind if I enjoy this. Oh yeah, sweepers are, are definitely bad for us. I think we have this with heroic reinforcements. And it's not heroic reinforcements. Mm-hmm. The attack's just not worth it. No, I haven't made an Esper mid any Esper mid range list. I mean, I, I have my Esper Angels deck, which is basically Esper mid range. No, I'm not really planning to in the future right now. I don't have any plan to. I'm enjoying staying home and streaming for now. Need the three three to be able to block. Um, need to be able to block there. Could not. Uh, what do I want to change? Spell Pierce is really good early in the game, but it loses its value quite quickly. I'm certainly going to be playing Tajik in this matchup. Tajik's definitely going to come in. Yeah, Justice Strike can kill some big creatures if that's, like, something we want to do. I imagine they're taking out ma Mass Manipulation. I, I don't think it's going to be in their deck anymore. Um, I do kind of want to play these Disdainful Strokes and Spell Pierces, but how do I make room for them? Take a Dovin out, and maybe one visitation. I'll just play one to sample stroke. Uh, circuitous route is like a. Uh, a really important card to Disdainful Stroke. So I can shock in to play the Snubhorn, but it's not going to really do anything for us right away. 
Yeah, and the Archway Angel. That's another. That's the other really good card to hit there. Yeah, that Archway Angel gaining a lot of life was really rough for us. Um, might as well shock. We could draw like a Danto Vanguard. You know, like I'll, I'll regret not shocking if we draw a two drop like that. Alright, we did not. Alright, we just gotta hope they have they don't have Gates of Blaze right away like they did last game. Hope they slow down a little bit on that Gates of Blaze. Yeah, last game they had it on turn three. Which is pretty rough for us. Okay. Go landing and dove in. Taking dove in up. This is no mere treaties on your impending failure. And we get to flip landing. Dove in gets four loyalty. We can ultimate it next turn. I don't think I need to play Hasta Marshall. I think it's. I think this is probably just a Gates of Blaze here. If they don't have Gates of Blaze, we're looking great. Hey, say moi. We did okay. We struggled at first in in that new event, uh, but then our, our last few runs, we got to like five wins and four wins, and did okay. The problem is you get a ton of packs in that that new event, but I I have a playset of Ravnica Allegiance already from all these packs, so. Um, or at least of the rare, so it was just getting like 20 gems a pack and didn't quite feel worth it for me then. Wish they gave kind of a variety of sets instead of all Ravnica Allegiance. So Dovin's ultimate. Uh, seven mana. Look at the top ten cards of your library. Put three of them into your hand. So next turn, next turn we get to go put three cards in our hand. You know, kind of, kind of dig towards finding as many uh, heroic reinforcements as we can. Yeah, the um, the new rule of how you cannot open up any cards that you have for already for like the rares and mythic slot really does mean you get the set a whole lot faster though. Uh, I know we drew heroic reinforcements there, but I still want to see if we find more heroic reinforcements. <clears throat> I don't know if our opponent disconnected or if they're just being a jerk. Uh, that's what I, I did too. I did a hundred dollars also, but I I did lots of limited, so I did a lot of sealed and drafting. And um, got most of the set there, and then just from from the other pack winnings, finished it out. Yeah, looks like they disconnected, and yeah, it seemed like they're maybe maybe tilted a little bit. Oh well, that's a win for us. We are four and one, and we have made it to the final boss here with Jeskai Tokens. So you know what that means. Gotta get our final boss music. Hopefully we can get that fifth win.
you don't need to be that good at limited to um, to do well in like the sealed. I I certainly think that it's that sealed is worth it for gems instead of just opening packs if you want to spend the time. Um, and if if you like limited, it's it's a really good way to get better too and just kind of learn interactions of, of like the new cards. Um, playing limited is is a good way to improve uh, just in Magic in general. Love the five drop. Can't play it though. Can't keep it. All right, what's our final boss plan? Hey, nerd girl. Yeah, KW. That that's this is the music for that. Hey, Nerd Girl with the resub for the third month in a row. First sub of the day. Let's hit that first goal. Let's do it. All right, first sub of the day. Attack. So we have a blue black knight of malice deck. So what else you got? Thief of sanity. That's fine. Don't have like a whole lot of great cards to get. Hmm. What's a good best of three deck that doesn't use many RNA cards? Um, good question. All right, you don't want many RNA cards. Yeah, you could just play Golgari, honestly. You don't even really need Hydroid Crisis. You don't need Sultai. Or Mono Blue. Mono Blue is a good one, too. Or is it Drake's? That's a good one. Alright, so they got something that's better than Snubhorn Sentry. Sapperling decks aren't very good. I mean, I think you can do Sapperling deck in best of one. I think I think best of one Sapperling deck budget. I think that's that's perfectly fine. It's it's tough best of three with that deck. Uh, it's it's going to really struggle against basically everything. But I think you can have the Sapperling deck best of one there before people can. Uh, Sideboard tune their deck against yours. So they have Thief of Sanity and Knight of Malice are the two cards we saw. Honestly, not sure if we change anything.
I've been liking Dovin. Dovin's been been really good for us. I have I have been liking it. I'm not sure if we need Justice Strike. The strike seems kind of a little unnecessary. I want to deploy. I'm going to play one deploy over an unbreakable formation. I'm not sure exactly why I want deploy, but I want to deploy. Just one. I think that's the card out of the sideboard I want the most. Yeah, we've had Divine Visitation. It's how we beat, uh, we beat Soltai earlier. Because uh, they had, you know, Midnight Reaper and Wild Growth Walker and a bunch of Explore stuff. And we just had Double War Boss. And then we, we topped it deck to Visitation. And then we started making 4-4 four, four Angels in the air. And it killed them. And the next game, kind of a similar thing. What one set has the most value to invest in for the new players? Um, it's certainly the, certainly the last two sets, the Ravnica sets. Um, it's certainly those are the top two. Because all the other sets will leave, uh, will leave standard in around about eight months from now, where those will be still good for a year and eight months. Plus, those sets have shock lands, so it's certainly those two is the top two, um, and they're they're kind of even to me, of like guilds of Ravnica or like guilds or. Um, or Ravnica Allegiance. They're pretty even. Uh, I would assume the metagame, the competitive metagame thing, pairs matches based on uh, record. Um, I'd assume it's like this. like They just check record to, to pair. But it's not always exact record. Like if you're two and zero, you're not going to only play against people who are two and zero. When you're two and zero, you can play against people who are zero and zero, or one and zero, or, or three and zero. Um, but they just try to pair closely. There you go. Opened up an even amount of RNA and GRN so far. Good. Very nice. Correct. Yeah, the check lands will will be gone when the old sets rotate out in about eight months. The check lands will be gone. <laughs> yeah, Steely Dan is awesome. I really liked Steely Dan, especially whenever I was younger. Like when I was in like high school, I listened to a ton of Steely Dan. All right, they got a couple lands out. For me. Hmm. I hope you don't mind if I enjoy this. Cross the red fine line and to work the saxophone. Right, so what the rotation means is that uh, they, those cards from those sets will just no longer be legal and standard. Like right now, we only have, you know, sets from Ixalan forward legal and standard. <clears throat> and um, at that time, we're, we'll only have sets, like in about eight months, it'll only be the sets from Guilds of Ravnica legal. So it's, it's there's the rotation once a year that happens so that... Uh, you know, standard stays fresh and new, um, and also it's just not, um, so you, it doesn't get, like, too big of just, you know, cards from the last four, five, six, seven years and something like that, so. So, once a year, uh, four sets all together, like, they all rotate out at the same time.
there are other formats where you can play all the cards ever printed like legacy you can you can play cards in beta um in that format Hmm. Goes down. You're doing me a favor. What I will there? gladly point Artists out your inadequacies. Die behind the wheel. Gonna, I'm trying to hold this unbreak. Like I could unbreakable formation there and make all my creatures two twos, uh, and really match up against this thief of sanity well. But I'm being a little, a little um, greedy by waiting a turn, getting another Dovid in play, making another one of these thopters. Uh, or next turn I can minus Dovin again, make another Thopter before I do this. And also have the opportunity of having like six mana where we can draw any, you know, creature or whatever to also put a counter on. So the the addendum is uh they put one one counters on the creatures. So it'll make all of our creatures two twos to be able to tussle with Thief of Sandy a little easier. All right, you're see you, Devin. Clearly, the shortcomings here were mine. Oh, Lyra. Think that's just game over. That's well, really, really glad to hear that, Dark Sip. That the community has been so helpful and everything. All right, so we didn't see any white the first game. Then I realized that they had white in their deck as well. They just look, looked like blue black the first game. So yep. Time for the, these justice strikes. Extra deploy. Instigator out like normal. Maybe disdainful stroke in instead of formation. I'm not really too impressed with that formation. Let's play a couple of disdainful strokes. Yep, this is a donation deck. You can always tell by over here. The Just Guy Tokens D D donation deck. I like Snubhorn as a card more than Instigator. We haven't seen any removal from our opponent yet. There's there's no there's no indication that um Ascending is going to be a problem. But of course that doesn't mean that it's necessarily the case. Yeah, we got there versus, versus the Gates deck, yeah. We had a, a really strong game 2 start against the Gates opponent, and they just quit. Yeah, Lyra has lifelink when she strikes herself with Justice Strike. So Justice Strike would allow them to gain um, to gain life. War Boss is the stronger play, but then I'm a little worried of Cry of the Carnarium. Eh, not that worried.
This is a hero precinct precinct one deck. I look forward to seeing your mistakes. This is this is certainly a different version of Esper Hero. They had Knight of Malice game one. I've just improved the search algorithm. All right, so I'm certainly taking a land. <clears throat> what else am I taking? Land, Justice Strike. Maybe two lands? I see taking two lands. I think Legion's landing. Yeah. Oh, I just took a shock land. That's probably not necessary. I'm sure I could have gotten a, a white untapped land and not and just not cost myself two life there. I thought I was grabbing Glacial Fortress, but you know I was thinking about the other cards. So there was no planes. I, I certainly need the white, I really wanted white source. Um, but maybe Hollow Found was the only one. Will other sets be introduced this year in standard? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, there's four sets uh, a year. So there's gonna be, there's one more Ravnica set uh, in a couple months and then there'll be another core set and uh, you know, like last last year they had Corset 2019, so there'll, there'll be another Corset, and then uh, um, and then finally, uh, when the third set this year is introduced, that's when rotation will happen. I like all the cards in our hand. I kind of think it's Dovin. But Dovin's pretty good. Justice Strike does nothing at the moment, but the way that we lose the game, Justice Strike would be would be helpful. Uh, reinforcements means they block, block, take. Two, four, six, eight, eleven. They take eleven. I think we're going to go 
There we go. Five and one. Oh yeah, visitation was like the only way for us to beat Sultai earlier. We had it both games, and it was very nice. All right, got our 2,100 gold and our 40 gems. Yeah, so good showing for the deck. We <clears throat> we drew very well a lot of times, and our opponents didn't have like their best hands a lot of times. You know, like a lot of things went right for us, but still, uh, pretty impressive. You know, five and one. <clears throat> Dovin did a lot of work for us. Absolutely, Dovin was good. Um, yeah, Dovin was impressive. For the most part, like I, I liked the sentries, honestly. And Hazda Marshall was better than I thought uh, whenever I just saw this card originally. But uh, we certainly made like some 1-1s one -one sometimes that were good. And we had the one match against Soltai where we made some 4-4s four with Divine Visitation. They're better than I thought. Um, you only you get vault progress only for like the uncommons and commons. When you get the gems, they don't count towards vault progress. Um, Instigator was probably like the weakest card in the deck, like some other two drop or something. I don't know exactly what else to put in there because we do need more twos. Um, War boss, of course, was great. Formation was basically bad. I don't think we ever use this card to much effect. We, we did one time against the Gates of Blaze and saved our creatures. So I guess we did that the one time. But for the most part, this is like, I could see this being like a one of or, you know, if you want it, doesn't need to be in there. Um, so if you, if you want, if you want to add in different cards, these are, these are definitely slots. Like if Unbreakable Formation was History Banalia, we would have been doing a lot better. Um, yeah, Lyra is definitely a huge problem for the deck. Because even Justice Strike, they gain a lot of life. Like, Lyra is just going to be a huge problem. I I don't really think that Luxodon is is a good sideboard card. I don't think this is worth all these sideboard slots. They, you know, you only have 15. They're pretty valuable. Don't really like the Luxodon. Um, and then, yeah, some more interaction for bigger things. I like the counter spells. Uh... Spell Pierce wasn't necessarily the best for us. I could see Negate, um, but it's it's fine. But I like Counter Magic. I like Disdainful Stroke. I like Deploy. I could certainly see Deploy being a main deck card, but you know, costing four is kind of rough. Um, but yeah, so th those are some those are some thoughts on like stuff to to check out. Uh, Conclave Tribunal, like I was talking about, could be another good uh, option that can get rid of Lyra and other things as far as a removal spell if you want to maybe trade out the Luxodons. Um, Dawn of Hope is like another option in the sideboard if you're trying to go long uh, against like control decks where you can have like a Dawn of Hope uh, that can just kind of keep on making tokens over and over. But yeah, there we go. Uh, Jeskai tokens. Yeah, maybe we need our own kind of Lyra in our in our sideboard for the mono red matchup because the mono red matchup felt really bad, and I don't know if Venerate Luxodon fixes that, but maybe if we had our own Shalais and Lyras and stuff like that, that could help that matchup. Uh, thought on Quench. I, I kind of like Quench. Yeah, I think Quench is is all right. Um. Yeah, I think Quench. Quench could certainly see play in this kind of deck. I like how Quench is definitely better when you're aggressive, so I like that aspect. The red enchantment that deals one damage for each one or less power creature attacking. Hmm. I mean, the times where that's going to be good is the times where you have a ton of creatures on the battlefield, and those are usually kind of easier games to win. I could see bringing that in as a sideboard option against uh, creature-heavy decks without removal. So decks that are just trying to set up a bunch of blockers on the ground. I could see having that red, like one or two of those red enchantments as a sideboard card there. All right. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.